All right, so it appears the upstairs neighbors who were vacuuming or filling up an air mattress or doing something that required a very loud motor that dispersed air, it seems like they're done, so I can actually start recording now. Let's go over this trade rumor that popped up a few weeks ago. This is literally from December 28th, 2021, and it actually hadn't really picked up too much steam until recently when it was conversed about in a few pieces on The Athletic. It was all over some other trade rumor sites, and I saw people talking about this on Twitter as well. Our source for today's trade rumor comes from Hockej.cz. This is a website from the Czech Republic, and it goes over Czech news, Czech hockey, Czech sports, stuff like that. And this article, Kubelik, oh boy, I'm going to go ahead and try to do this. Kubelik came McDavidovi, Mezi Shik Okay, no, we're not going to do that. You can go ahead and read this if you can understand the language, because a link will be in the description below. But what we're going to be doing, because I am an anglicized English speaker, is translating this to English via the Google machine. Kubelik to McDavid. The phones are said to be ringing between Chicago and Edmonton. As we noted, this article was originally from December 28th, 2021, so it was about a month ago that we actually heard this entire rumor start up from Czech sources, but again, it hadn't really been written about and talked about until recently. Speculation about the possible transfer of Marc-Andre Fleury from Chicago to Edmonton is not the only one that is kind of in this territory. I'm going to change the wording a little bit because some of the translations might not be completely accurate or might not be completely representative of the entire wording that the original article is trying to portray. There is also some communication between the same teams about the possible arrival of Dominic Kubelik, according to several overseas sources. First of all, both clubs are used to trading together. Let's recall the displacement of Duncan Keith, the three-time Stanley Cup champion who has been wearing the oil men's, oh my goodness, the oil men's jersey since this season. In this case, Chicago did not keep a dollar from the veteran's salary. That would probably have to be the case of Kubelik, or it would have to be a trade-off of comparable players, HockeyWriters.com speculates. This article then goes over into a few paragraphs talking about goaltending, saying, okay, Koskinen and Smith, these guys are not really doing all too well. It's funny because this article was written about a month ago, and yeah, the same problems still kind of persist today, even though Miko Koskinen had one good game against the Calgary Flames. Before the season, Ken Holland dealt intensively with the post of goalkeeper. Yeah, it's kind of strange, the translation, I get it. But in the end, there was no change. The bet on the previous tandem was more of a way out of the emergency. If the performances of the Mass Oilers men are not satisfactory, it's possible that Fleury and Kubelik will come from Chicago at the same time at the trade deadline. This is due to the fact that the Blackhawks play poorly and may thus be among the sellers. Okay, calm down there, Google Translate, calm down. Let's go over what they have to say about Dominic Kubelik. Obviously, this is a Czech website, so they definitely do have probably a more introspective look as to Kubelik as a player. He's got himself a $3.7 million AAV contract that is ending this season. He will be an RFA once that contract expires, a protected agent, as the article says, which gives him the potential new club exclusive rights to negotiate cooperation with him for years to come. The native of Pilsen cannot run away without compensation. That's the offer sheet. The Czech sniper is playing in the NHL for a third season, and this kind of stuff is all available on his Elite Prospects page, so let's go ahead and do that and refer back to the regular article that we're seeing when we actually go over how he plays and what he could do for a potential Oilers team. As they said, 26 years old, he is indeed from the Czech Republic making $3.7 million, but he started out his NHL career with 30 goals in 68 games played with the Blackhawks in 2019-20. He was a very, very good rookie. He was third place in the entire voting behind what was it? Oh boy, was it the Hughes and McCarr year? I believe it was. 30 goals, though, as a rookie certainly is nothing to scoff at, and he was a point per game in the Stanley Cup bubble. Last season, though, he only had 17 goals and 38 total points in 56 games played, so somewhat of a drop-off goal scoring-wise, but he still was a very capable player. Chicago was not really all too great in 2020-2021. They were starting to downfall a little bit year after year. 
Now, I get it, the bubble year they weren't really all too great either, but they made the playoffs because of that strange loophole with the play-in series and everything. Either way, though, this year, right now, Kubalik has 16 points in 41 games played, 9 goals, 7 assists, so we're at the halfway mark of the year. He's on pace for 18 goals, which would be a pretty big drop-off compared to his previous two seasons of 30 goals in 68 games and 17 goals in 56 games. And he's on pace for about 32 points, which would also be a pretty bad low. Now, Kubelik is not that bad of a player, even though he is degrading in terms of point production. It just kind of happens to be the fact that Chicago is Chicago, and nothing is really going all too well for this team. This is what the scouting report part of the article says about Kubelik. He has the reputation of a shooter, and there is more space on the wings in Edmonton than in the middle of an attack. Okay, what the heck does that mean? Everyone's breathtaking opportunity to board alongside Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl centers. Who wouldn't want such a position? Speaking of the Oilers, let's add another gossip that has been on the internet in recent weeks. Although it probably won't rain from this cloud, Ken Holland reportedly contacted Mike Babcock. Okay, we're not going to talk about that here. Let's just focus on Kubalik. So, Dominic Kubalik being on a trade block is an idea that we actually kind of hinted towards talking about a few days ago. Was it a few days ago? Yesterday? I completely forgot. When did we talk about Debrinket? That video, we kind of highlighted what the NHL media analysts were saying about the Chicago Blackhawks and that the only untradeable players they have are Jones, Taves, and Kane. Technically meaning that everybody else in the roster is sort of up for grabs should any NHL team go out there and pitch the right pitch for Chicago. That includes Debrinket, where Friedman said it was unlikely he was going to get moved, but if he does get moved, it's only going to be for a package that makes you say, okay, that's why he got moved. They got a huge overpayment for this guy. Now, there isn't really any indication from Sarah Vailey or Friedman as to what a guy like Kubelik could get instead of a Debrinket, but I would kind of think that the same sort of rule applies, where a Dominic Kubelik might be on the trade block, but it would only really be in response to a package that would be definitively, without any doubts whatsoever, good enough for this kind of player. Kubelik is a guy that, I mean, he is 26 years old, so it's not really like he's going to get any better anytime soon, like, I get it, this is only his third season in the league, but debuting as a 30-goal guy, a guy on pace, if you do the math right here, 30 divided by 68 multiplied out by 82, he was on pace for 36 goals as a rookie at 23 years old. Like, that's kind of already in the prime territory of his career, and the fact that he is an RFA making $3.7 million a season, whose contract expires at the end of this season, it makes things really interesting, because whatever the next team, let's say it's not Chicago, let's say whatever team goes out there and trades for a Cuba League, Edmonton or not, you know, who cares? Whatever that team is going to go out there and offer in a Duba League contract extension, it's going to go one of two ways. Either they go long term and they say, OK, we've seen enough of you at the NHL level from your rookie season to your sophomore season to this down junior year that you're having right now that we're going to offer you, let's say, four or five million dollars over the span of eight years because we believe you can be a consistent 20 goal guy or Kubelik and the team have a conversation, and he says, yeah, I kind of feel like I can do better. I feel like I have another 30-goal season in me. I feel like I can do better than my 30-goal year and actually go up to 35 goals consistently or 40 goals one year. I can be that Debrinkat. I can be that sniper. I can be that guy that Chicago Blackhawks fans thought I was going to be when I made my rookie debut in 2019-20. Maybe I'll go short-term. Two years. Let's go $3.5 million, and by the time two years rolls around, maybe I have two 30-35 goal seasons under my belt, then I can get an even bigger amount of money. Now, whether or not Edmonton is willing to go out there and try that experiment, that's up in the air. That's kind of what the entire video is about here. It's just a rumor, is it not? But to hear from Czech sources from a month ago that there has indeed been some interest, not only in Flurry, which has been very heavily documented, but in Kubelik as well, it makes things very interesting to me when I think about the idea of Edmonton acquiring another sniper-like player. We saw what Connor McDavid did to James Neal. We saw that Connor McDavid made Alex Chason a 20-goal guy. Can you believe Chason has 20 goals in a season because he played with McDavid? That guy is just, man, you can watch my videos anytime about the Canucks to hear what I have to say about Alex Chason. But if Dominic Kubalik was in a position to ever try, even try to go out there, get a bridge deal, and bet on himself to be better... 
I think Edmonton's probably the team that you would want to go out there and try that on, especially playing with a guy like Dreisaitl or McDavid that can turn you into probably... I mean, you were a 30, 35 goal scorer playing with Kane and Taves. You could probably be a 40 goal scorer with McDavid, right? So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about this entire idea? The link will be in the description to the article in check. I hope you enjoyed this. Rishar Ashroll's 9-9. And bye. <laughs>